you had a wife. No, she didn't, because I never mentioned it to her. Certificate. Yes, ma'am. So when did you start doubting? When his mother started talking, Your Honor? I started but doubting. But Mr. Murray, you say you did not use protection. We had a situation. A married man had an affair with another woman outside his marriage and allegedly got her pregnant. Now the wife is at court to confront her husband's mistress and prove that her child is not his biological daughter. Things are about to get interesting. To confront your husband's mistress and to prove her one-month-old daughter, Kiasia, is not his biological yes, daughter. Yes, Your Honor. According to the wife, she found out that the husband had a mistress when she went to his place of work to talk to him about his distant behavior some days prior. The mistress also told her that she was three weeks pregnant. <laughs> talk about a double blow. <laughs> pops up in the car like she's a Ricky Raccoon or somebody, Your Honor. Upon hearing my voice, turned around and I went and knocked on the window. She introduced herself as his girlfriend. Was Miss Lipscomb not in the least bit curious about the name saved as my BM on Mr. Jackson's phone? One would think it necessary to inquire about a strange name that constantly calls a man you're in a relationship with. Well, check out what happens next. I'm um, Mr. Jackson and she calls and the kids calls. That's how I know her voice is so high pitched. You can hear her through Your the phone. Honor. My BM, which is my baby mother. Seemingly, Mr. Jackson said that Miss Lipscomb never knew he had a wife because he never told her. Well, spoken like a man who knew exactly what he was doing. At least now we know that Miss Lipscomb wasn't lying. You had a wife? No, she didn't because I never mentioned it to her, Your Honor. You never no. told her you were married? No, Your Honor. Miss Jackson claims she didn't deny Miss Lipscomb's child and even went ahead and bought things for the baby out of the kindness of her heart. Honestly, props to her because there's not a lot of women that would do that. She added that Miss Lipscomb also gave the impression that she'd stop messing around with her husband. Well, you wouldn't believe what happened next. I understand that we all have shortcomings. At that time, I believe that she had left, like she was done trying to be with my husband or mess with my husband, Your Honor, because that's the idea that she gave me. Apparently, Mr. Jackson found out through his wife that Miss Lipscomb was pregnant while he was in jail. Miss Jackson saw it on Facebook as well as evidence that Miss Lipscomb was with another guy at that time. She also added that the child was the other man's baby. On her Facebook page, Your Honor, she had listed that she was going to the hospital. At that time, Your Honor, she was with another man, and I have evidence if you would let, allow me to present it, Your Honor. Well, this just keeps on getting better and better. It appeared that Mr. Jackson had signed the child's birth certificate, thereby taking up all legal and financial responsibilities for the kid. To make it worse, he had placed the child on his wife's military benefits. Talk about crazy. What was the point of signing the birth certificate then? Yeah. Your Honor, that's why the baby was placed on my benefit. Your Honor, I her also baby for is what? For my placed child. on my benefit, Your Honor. How delusional of Mr. Jackson to have a mistress outside of his marriage and still complain about the back and forth between the two women. Like, duh. Why? Because this is all you get. Even if I do say something. What's the point? They still gonna go backwards and forward. It's still gonna be taken. So, Mr. Jackson. So, let's look at this. You sign the birth certificate of a kid whom you're not sure is yours, thereby automatically creating a dependent. You haven't been paying child support, which is required of you. Then you put your mistress's child on your wife's military benefits. It's just. <laughs> what? Yes, Sean. So, you legally are the father of this child? Yes. Are you paying child support? No. Hmm. But she's on your wife's military benefit. Yeah. Apparently, Mr. Jackson doesn't support either of the women. He's clearly not worth it. Let's just find out if he's really the father. That witness stand and go stand at either podium next to the woman you support in this drama. You I don't created. stand by neither one. I just stand in the middle because it's still going to be drama. <laughs> it, it really you know, after all the drama, I was kind of expecting this to happen, actually. In a way, it's kind of good for both women as it brought out the true intentions of Mr. Jackson not to support either one of them. You are not the father. <laughs> well, thank you. Mr. Jackson really needs to fix up and learn what it means to take up responsibility when you create an offspring. Miss Jackson's got a heart of gold and both women are better off without him. On to the next case. A man denies that the child he had with his ex-girlfriend is his biological son. The woman is now seeking a DNA test to prove that the spawn came from his loins. 
In addition, she's suing him for child reading expenses. Well, let's get into it. You are seeking a DNA test to prove to your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Bailey, that he is the father of your one-year-old son, Cash. You claim the only reason he's denying your son is because of his meddling mother. Mr. Bailey and his mom believe that Miss Knox is only pinning the baby on him because she sees that he would soon hit it big in his dancing career. Can we say that he's delusional? He's denying everything based on a career he doesn't even have yet. Both of you claim Ms. Knox is pinning a baby on your son because she is after his fame and future fortune. Yes, Your Honor. Technically, Ms. Knox said she's had to take care of the kids since it was born because Mr. Bailey quit his job. He, however, said that he's always had a job. I guess he's referring to his dancing career? If you can call it that. Take care of him alone. I pay for everything. That's because you wanted to. That's because, because the, no ma'am. No, no ma I pay for everything because no he, didn't, he quit his job in he, June he of 2014. Mr. Bailey, however, claims that when the child was born, he paid $200 for his circumcision. Not really sure why he brought that up, like it's his responsibility or it's a big deal. Born is my potential child was born. I uh, I paid to get his um, circumcision. circumcision. I paid for that. That was $200 out of pocket. Why no if question. he's not your child? No question. As a potential father, why would he send that tweet out and then say he meant it as a joke? That's just really wrong on a lot of levels. Like, he tried to play it off as him being sarcastic. But I don't think that's going to fly with Judge Lauren Lake. I wonder how many more receipts I'm going to need before I go to court. Right. What? What kind of tweet is this, Mr. Bailey? It's a, it's a joke because who, who does that? Like, what type of father? I have two you, kids. You, you right. I have two kids. No, did you tweet this? Kids. So where did the doubts about the child not being his come from if he was present during the pregnancy and even signed the birth certificate? I couldn't believe what his reasons were, and you won't either. You went through the pregnancy with her? Yes, ma'am. You signed the birth certificate? Yes, ma'am. So when did you start doubting? When his mother started talking, Your Honor. Well, that doesn't sound right. According to him, it was a first-come, first-served basis. I'm gonna give you a hug and a kiss, right? From the other guy. And my text message said, I'm on my way to come get you. If he would've got that first, okay. if she was already pregnant, that probably would've been his baby. She probably been saying it's his baby. Wait a minute, what? what? Miss Bailey believes that Miss Knox was already pregnant before she met Mr. Bailey, and she saw that he was giving the other kids a good life. That's why she pinned the pregnancy on him. Also, I had no idea that making a few trips to Hollywood meant you'd already made it big in life. Gotta give it to him though, he does have a couple of cool moves. His other kids, and maybe even what's he going on a for- Yana, he does well, not have a career. I don't know what career you're talking about, but he does not, he was nothing when I met him, and he's nothing now. And like you, it nothing. your house. You're all down. He was denied visitation because of how filthy his house is, and also because he's not done anything to take care of the kid. She should have allowed him his right to see his child. He does have that right regardless. He is filthy, is-, is You're a lie! You didn't- I still don't trust my child with you because no, you didn't not. raise your own child freely. Just give my child to you. But you that understand that. Her actions seem valid. She really didn't want to have to wait on him to provide for their child when it was clear he couldn't provide at the time, which is why she took him off child support. But it looks like he wasn't even interested in providing at all, so she brought him back on child support so he could take on some of his responsibility in regards to his kid. Man. Imagine getting off the hook just to be roped back in. Child support in order for you to get take care, to take care of a child that you helped me make. Respond to the case the most. So that's how the case got closed. I didn't go down there and say, close the case. I just didn't respond to it at all. But I recently wow. did it. Judge Lauren Lake has heard enough. So let's check out the results. I think it's time for the results. <laughs> Thank you, Jerome. I wasn't sure what to expect, but at least now he's sure and can take up responsibility for his kid fully. Mr. Bailey, you are Cash's father. Both parents need to fix up and figure out how to parent their kid. The grandmother and mother also need to get along. As an older woman, certain behaviors and words shouldn't emanate from this person. On to the next case. Two men are claiming to have fathered Miss Harris's 18-month-old kid. Mr. Murray, her boyfriend, who's a plaintiff, and Mr. Donaldson, her ex-boyfriend, who's a defendant, are both in court to determine who the real father is. Daughter Anaya, your current boyfriend, the plaintiff, Mr. Murray, and the defendant, your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Donaldson. According to Ms. Harris, she and the defendant were dating but had feelings for someone else when she got pregnant. 
Although he went to the baby shower and was at the hospital when she gave birth. I mean, that's good of him for showing up at least. But then when I got pregnant, he told me he had feelings for another girl and he told me that he didn't want to be with me. He was there during the baby shower and... Okay, that's a solid reason. He was in a new relationship and felt his ex-girlfriend was trying to ruin it by saying she was pregnant. Of course, there were no doubts, you know, once he saw her pronounced tum tum. She was trying to ruin the relationship that I was that I had. Oh, you feel like she was trying to hang on to you by claiming that she was pregnant because you told her you were in love with somebody else. Mm -hmm. The defendant's mother said she started doubting that her son was the baby's father when her own mother went to pick the baby up and saw Mr. Murray. My mind is when my mother went to pick the baby up and saw Fred. Oh! The resemblance must have been a striking one for Mr. Donaldson to send that text to Mr. Murray. Also, Ms. Donaldson's mother attested to the resemblance, and according to Mr. Murray, everyone kept telling her that the child looked like him. Yeah, I was on Facebook and I got a message mm -hmm. from uh, Jalen, and he told me that the baby could possibly be mine. Telling you that the baby could possibly be yours? Yeah, I needed to get a deal. Oh, now I get why there's confusion as to who the father of the baby actually is. And that's because it appears that Miss Harris had slept with Mr. Murray while she was still in a relationship with the defendant. Although she claims to have used protection when she slept with Mr. Murray, which makes her convinced that the child is Mr. Donaldson. Because mistakes don't happen and condoms are perfect, am I right? Sleep with Mr. Murray? Yes. While you were in the relationship with Mr. Donaldson? Yes. Mr. Murray, what do you remember? She was in a relationship with Mr. Donaldson at the right. time. but you That's honestly a lot to take in. Mr. Murray says he didn't use protection because there was a situation at that time. When he was asked by the court what that situation was, you wouldn't believe what he said. Mr. Murray, you say you did not use protection. We had a situation on December 14th. What's a situation? A threesome. Oh, I didn't expect you to say that. Okay, big props to Mr. Murray for taking Miss Harrison and her child in and taking care of both of them when she was at her lowest. Also, he's been part of the kid's life and she sees him as a father figure. A lot of respect. It was in like a down position, so I just took, like, I take care of both of you. Do you Pretty understandable why Mr. Donaldson wanted them to be a family after the baby was born, especially since he believed he was the father of the baby. However, she was already in a relationship with Mr. Murray. But what about his other relationship, the one he left her for? Guess we'll never know. After I had Anaya, he wanted us to be together. Oh, after you had the baby, then he wanted to be a, a family. Yeah. But you maintain that he's the biological... All right, let's check those results. It's time to get the answer to that looming question. The results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Mr. Gerald Donaldson, you are not the father. Is it just me or is the result predictable? The striking resemblance with Mr. Murray is there and even the blind can see that. So let's check out the second result. By this court, Mr. Murray, you are not the father. Well, isn't that a little crazy and interesting now? Really was not expecting that at all. I kind of feel bad for both of them. Really looks like we won't be finding out who the biological father is anytime soon. And Mr. Donaldson, I hope this is a lesson learned for you as well. I loved when you said when you found out you had potentially gotten a girl pregnant. Honestly, Mr. Murray and his family seem like amazing people for still choosing to be a part of her life despite him not being the biological father. Miss Harris does still have a responsibility to figure out who that biological father is, though. Uh-oh. Looks like there's drama in the courtroom as a woman faces a former friend who claims her son fathered her three-month-old baby. ...with your son and is now claiming he fathered her child, even though you know she was sleeping with many more men. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, my Ms. God. Jackson. The defendant admits that she did sleep with her friend's son, but at this moment, it doesn't really matter because her son did consent to it and the baby's here. But somehow, he doesn't want to do anything for her kid. 
time, I've known her to talk to several other men. So you know she was talking to several other men? Yes, ma'am. Just talking? You gotta do more than talking to make a baby. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> whenever we used to hang out or whatever, she had multiple people coming around. You know, a guy was um, spending a lot. The further this case goes, the crazier it gets. She claims while she was his mother's friend, they were having sex multiple times a day for weeks. His only defense is that he knew about other men she was talking to and she had more than one cell phone. But we can't do without addressing the elephant in the room. It's grown. So the point is, is you decided that it was okay to sleep with your friend's son. Me and her, me and her I'm son was friends. I'm school. I'm 48 Girl, years old. And, and you dang 13 I come years from older than me, honey. woman my age, You're 13 I years don't care if he's a or not. That's got to be pretty weird. Sleeping with a friend's son is borderline betrayal. I mean, there are so many people in the world and the person you choose to sleep with is a child of your friend? It's just a bit too much. All right, the fact that she's not even sorry is just disgusting. In this particular case, I can really understand the plaintiff's anger. They were even more than friends. She took her in when she had no place to go and then she turned around and did this. I was a young mother from 14. I got pregnant at 14, I had him at 15, and I had five by 22. Mm. So I ain't gonna give no trick, no problem. But see, women helped me, and women raised me, and women brought me through. So I don't do dog girl. Both of them had a few things in common, being that they were both young mothers. The plaintiff befriended her to help her and guide her as she didn't have the same when she had her first kid. But all that time, she was eyeing her son. No, so me and Dominique became friends. We got close. We was like brother, sister, and we had sex every day, nonstop. My, my Wait a so minute, hold on, hold on. Hold on. on. <laughs> Miss Jackson, that sounds nasty. Now you said. All right. Well, the defendant isn't the only one to take a piece of the blame cake. All right, because the son also took a bite. He claims that he was going through some stuff at the time, and that's why he felt a connection to her. Even though we slept together, I know for a fact I wasn't the only person she was sleeping with. Throughout the time that I've known her, she had two different cell phones. Those phones ring constantly during the time that we're together. We ain't talking about... And don't forget about, the girls. Not and only them that. Two in there too. Not you dog all right, and... We not know only that. Ain't the daddy. And... Not only that. It's a pretty big possibility that she did sleep with multiple people. Her phones were always ringing whenever they were together, and she was always ignoring them. A man even confronted her about it once when they were walking in the street together and she called him her brother. Coupled with that, the plaintiff has caught her several times with married men. They talked to me about you. that, so she never told me their names, but she hid it. Okay, now, Miss Jackson, is what Miss Robinson testifying to true? It was only one other man, but at the end of the day, me and Dominique was having sex every Shut day. Up. Shut up! My the plaintiff also believes there's a married man in the picture, which is another doubt. But here's the kicker, there's no proof. The defendant's sure that at the time, she knows who she slept with and it was only the plaintiff's son. But we gotta talk about the drama. If this kid is the plaintiff's grandchild, she's gonna grow up with a lot of drama in her life. Let's check out the results. Are the father. Oh, thank you, thank you, you thank you. Miss Jackson, you baby, that, but... thank you. Miss Jackson, thank calm you. down. A woman comes to court desperate to know if her late husband fathered a child with the defendant outside of their marriage. Change the fact that you slept with a married man. You claim Mr. Richardson is your daughter's father and you're entitled to the social security benefits for her. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Richardson and Ms. Hill, explain your dad. At the time the plaintiff's husband died, they asked him if he wanted to see his kid, which was the defendant's child, and he rejected the child right before he died. And that's also what the plaintiff chose to believe, which is understandable. But the defendant also claims she didn't sleep with anybody else. Prior to me being with Bert, I wasn't with nobody for at least two months. You contend that you were sleeping with no one else. Correct, Your Besides Honor. him. Yes, Your Honor. Even though you were aware he was a married man. I wasn't aware of that, Your Honor. I she wasn't aware of his wife when she was dating him. He was about to get married to her when his mother revealed to her that he was already married to somebody else. He had a wife, a wife who had no idea about what the heck was going on. Richardson, when did you find out? I found out from my mother-in-law. She uh, wrote me a letter and yep. we talked over the phone and she told me that he had a girlfriend and she also told me that he had a baby. She sent me a picture of the child. I don't, I don't... The defendant met him while she was living with her aunt. He'd flirted with her and then surprisingly, he bought an apartment right near his mom's house. 
They began dating and he gave her a key to the house. Time passed and she got pregnant. She didn't find out early enough because she thought it was a thyroid problem, so the baby was a pretty big surprise for her. I ain't never in my life been with no married man. Your I, Honor, what I you why found her? With him out of all you should have stopped then. Why sit up there and keep messing with him? Miss Hill, when did I leave? And then I left him when I was five months pregnant. After I found out, I his found his out four months and left him. at five. She you didn't buy him what nothing. I did. When they met, he said he was staying with his brother, but then she found out he was staying with a 23-year-old girl, which was an ick moment to her, but he had an explanation for it. They dated for months before she found out he was married, but what's a mystery to her is why he doubted her kid. He doubted enough to tell all of his family members about it. Dad was niece. I don't think that this baby is mine. Um, I even have somebody else who's coming to visit me while I'm here. So she was never in the picture until the fact that she had the child. So after she so had- So you're saying Ms. Russ- The man's married and while his wife was away, he slept with multiple people and even got one of them pregnant. There's no real doubt here because there's nobody to say that the kid isn't his. And when he denied the child, it's not certain that he knew for sure. Miss Hill, and you said whose baby is it? And he said that she said that's your uncle's baby? Yes. So there was an acknowledgement that- Miss Pam was acknowledging my baby until Miss Richardson got came back. No. No. That's not no. true. She acknowledged my baby. The plaintiff had a child with her husband, but the kid tragically died at an early age, so she's willing to welcome the kid. But let's be honest, their husband betrayed them all, even to his last breath, so the last thing they need to do is defend him. He cheated on his wife multiple times, and he never got repercussions for his actions. Unfortunately, he died, and it's sad they lost him so early, but that doesn't absolve all that he's done. And I'm quite sure she's chosen to forgive him because she's a good person. Myself and her shit. I'm trying to be a peacemaker in this whole situation, and I feel like as a victim in the situation, I shouldn't care at all. But I do. You're not the only victim. I even had. And it all comes down to this. All of them are in support of the kid being part of their family, and all they want is to accept the kid as theirs. Now it's time for the truth. Richardson. Thank you, Thank you. Um, That's all we want. That's all we want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't lie about nothing. I'm too grown for that. Well, we go about what my husband said, and as yeah. a wife, that was my duty. I understand that. you have that. to respect that also. An Atlanta man and his pregnant girlfriend claim he's not the father of the defendant's 13-month-old son. Years ago, but our furious Ms. Bailey is now claiming you fathered her 11-month-old son, which you say is impossible. Is that correct? Yes, John. Ms. Bailey, you say Mr. Dark is a deadbeat who knows full well he is your son. The two parties aren't strangers. They've known each other for about seven or eight years. He knows her well, and he knows her capabilities, so putting the baby on him isn't really that surprising. Um, myself and Miss Bailey, um, we was in a relationship for about four years. Okay. Everything was okay. Everything was pretty good when I first met her. We had some good conversations about establishing us a family and probably having kids, um, things like that. She, we lived. So they had a relationship for about four years, a relationship which came to an end when he knew about her cheating. He traveled for work, and during the time he was gone, she was sleeping with someone else. She was doing this so shamelessly that it was her own best friend who revealed her secret to him. Best friend yeah, told you this that. This is what her best friend told me. Yes, ma'am. And I only uh, did it because I thought you was cheating on me. Okay. But. So you admit you cheated on him? I did. Okay, and so your best friend told on you? Yeah. Okay, mad props because he tried to make it work for a while until he just couldn't and he had to give up. He just couldn't work past the fact that she cheated on him. They broke up, but they still had a sexual relationship which lasted for a couple years. But eventually that stopped, and the conception dates aren't what they seem. Well, that's according to her anyway. First week, the first week, around the 6th or 7th of March. So, with the calculation and the date she's using, Mr. Dark, you're saying this pregnancy would only been eight months. Yes, so, you believe she was already pregnant when you yes, all were intimate in March. She had to be already pregnant. Her reaction to that just says everything. There is a chance that what he's saying is true, but even with his doubts, he stuck around and helped her out. He was there at the hospital when the baby was born, but then she forced him to sign the birth certificate. I on didn't your sign own. it with you. What was gonna happen? He won't have your last name. You won't get to sign it. Did you not say that? Okay, but okay, you know you I said that. I did not tell you that. No, I did not. I said okay. If you don't sign, okay, that's on you. That's what? 
The reason she's emotional is because this has happened before with one of her other kids. She had this exact same fight with her ex and in the end he wasn't the father. He brings his current girlfriend to court to give her testimony. Peter, but what you're saying is, is that you have a similar due date yes. as the one that was presented for Jameer, as, as when Jameer was born. Right. Yes. Okay, well, we're two different people. Like... The plaintiff says she likes to deal with attached men, men who've got something going on in their lives, and she's quite attracted to them. She's been trying to get with them now that he's got a girlfriend. I mean, he's been there for the kid. He even took him to his hometown to a funeral, and everyone told him, hey, that's not your kid. They need the answers because this is going to disrupt a lot of that kid's life. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Dark, you are the father. <laughs> the scorned Detroit woman summons her lover and his wife to paternity court to prove that he fathered her one-year-old daughter. Night may have been a secret, but your daughter isn't. And once you prove he's the father, you want him to leave his wife and go home with you. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. McKnight, you are in court today. His testimony seems to be quite brave, but the defendant's is unbelievable. He talks about how he was led to temptation by the plaintiff, and it was all a mistake. I mean, <laughs> what else is new? and I picked the wallet up and I seen his ID and it said Ramon McKnight. And I said, I seen him at the job. When I seen him at the job, I hand him his wallet. So after that, I seen him numerous times and then he just asked me for my number. Oh, so it started off at... Well, that's not exactly a temptation. It's more like genuine attraction to somebody. Well, he was married, so they kept their affair a secret. Um, He was keep telling me like he was tired of his wife. Um, I never said that. Yes, yes, Your Honor, he did. He told me he was tired of her. She so he up. told you he was married, but he yes. said, I'm tired of my wife. Yes, mm -hmm. Your Honor. Yes. At the time, she was lonely because her mom had just passed away. And unfortunately for her, where she found companionship was in a married man's arms. Every day we get off of work, he was coming to have sex with me. And where? Dad. At your house? At my house, at a room, in her, in her, her car, the car he bought her, oh. that she got repo because she couldn't pay the note on it. And then on the truck he got that she got now, we had multiple sex in that truck too. His wife is well-spoken. She says though she's legally married to her husband, it's not her obligation to degrade her or make her feel lesser because first, she's a woman and she needs to be held accountable, but not by her insults. Children with my husband, if her daughter is in fact my husband's daughter, they need to know their siblings. I am not an immature woman. I don't feel the need to try and keep a man away from his child. I eliminated myself. Both women have spoken, but the court hasn't said anything. He tells a story about how he keeps bad friends and they're the main cause of the entire situation. They prompted him to talk to the plaintiff knowing he was married and he allowed it. The fact that they do work at the same job is just crazy. After work is their mini vacation. You are testifying in this courtroom that there was a co-worker who told you that you should go try to sleep with Ms. Wilson. Yes, Your Honor. But that same co-worker was sleeping with her too? Yes, Your Honor. Why would he want you to sleep with the same woman he's sleeping with? I, I don't know, but a lot of- He keeps using temptation as an excuse, which honestly makes no sense. And he seems like no words of truth can come out of this dude's mouth. Even his body language is betraying this guy. So then he goes on to say the plaintiff was promiscuous and that's why she tempted him. But he's the one that's married. I mean, after all of his crap, I can't even imagine how his wife feels. So I, uh, I answered. She told me, I just want you to know because uh, Ray, because that's what some of his coworkers call him, is not telling you that we're together and we're sleeping together. And basically, she insinuated that he was... The plaintiff had given him an ultimatum for him to leave his family for her, but he told her he couldn't leave his family, and this made her mad. Mad enough, in fact, to call his wife to just ruin it all. Well, that allowed him to work on the marriage he's actively trying to ruin. Sex every night. And then this is when he's wrecking me off every week for 50. No, we did no idea. Every, every, every night he came to see me and on his payday was Tuesday because to get a car, he was paying me $450 every week. No, I was not, Your Honor. There's, yeah, yeah. He, he was actually paying her $450 a week for the fare for being his mistress. And for whatever crazy psycho reason, she seems proud of it. 
She genuinely seems proud of the fact that she's a mistress. I mean, she should know that you can't make your own home by breaking someone else's. It's always going to come back around. And if a man had the mind to cheat on his wife who has kids, if he eventually gets with you, he's going to cheat on you too. I, because I don't want my wife to know. I said, Oh, you were going to ultrasound? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. He was going to the Miss McKnight. I want you to yes, tell the court, how do you find out about the pregnancy? Well, I'm glad you asked, Your Honor. 20 phone calls back to back on Messenger. I automatically knew, okay, here we go again. Ooh, boy. All right, batting down the hatches. This one is going to be a storm, because here we go. A Kentucky man dated a woman he met in church and gave her twins his last name. Now he's in court to find out if he's their biological father. The defendant was a respectful, church-going family man who turned out to be anything but. You claim that after giving birth to your twins, Braley and Bishop, fathering your babies. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The defendant has quite the accusation. He claims the plaintiff had a secret relationship with another man behind his back and he's sure the children are for that man. Well, there's some conflict in them, their accusations. We arrived, and as soon as we talked, like our music, our ta everything, we just vibed. Like, it was it was great. Then we ran into some problems. He went through my phone, and I did have a lot of open doors. Oh, oh. wait, hold on. Let me get that uh, metaphor. Okay. She had other doors open, which meant she was considering her options. That's a bad thing to do, but then he didn't take the right steps in terms of discovery. Wait, didn't he meet her at church? And I did it, and I'm looking through the phone. I'm like, okay. And I bring it to her, and I'm seeing messages from other dudes and all this other stuff. So I'm like, what is this? What kind of messages so, did you see from other guys? Messages of just trying to, you know, hook up with her and, like, you know, stuff. Two weeks later, after he discovered she was talking to other men and accepting advancements from them, she found out she was pregnant. An answer. That's where we were at. So how did he ever find out? He was really nonchalant about it, but once the once I did get pregnant, he was amazing. Cedric rubbed my feet, rubbed my belly. He would get it by 2 a.m., go get me ice and hot Cheetos. She claims he was nonchalant when she found out she was pregnant because at that point, the seeds of doubts came to fruition. But because he's a caring person who lives with children, he decided to support her with the doubts still in his mind. I just felt like me as a man and the way I've been obligated to my other kids, there's still a chance that they're mine. So I'm not going to build this whole little case upon my doubts. And I'm still going to be there until we find out what, you know, what's what. So I was still going to be there by us. He was there for the birth, but that's when his doubts furthered because according to him, the kids looked nothing like him. Well, one of them at least. He claims one twin looked like him and the other did not. They let on that I just couldn't come my way to terms accepting both of them or, or, or you know, either which one. Like I said, the reason for Bishop was like I said, he just favored me. So that kind of, it took me from like questioning him. Miss Looper, did you tell anyone else that they potentially could be the father of these beautiful twins? One person. Ooh, she does admit to telling someone else that they might be the father. The other man she told also has a daughter and he claims the kids look like his daughter. Sex with wrote to you and said, I think this is my daughter. Correct, correct. Yeah. Excuse me, um, and another reason, like I said, that I, you know, that I even have any kind of this doubt because like I said, when, when she first told me that she was pregnant, I had asked her. Here it comes. He claims that she told him a lie about there being another person she didn't use protection with. That's a lie, but it's a protective nervous lie. He didn't sign the birth certificate either. But the reason was more sorrow and confusion. He'd actually lost two of his children in that same hospital, in that same room where she gave birth. So he was dealing with a lot. It goes through my mind, it's me losing my other two, you know what I mean? So, so I mean, you were avoiding and dealing with more than one issue. Yes, ma'am. At that time. Yes, and I think it's honest, and I appreciate your honesty when you say you were running hot and cold, because we see that a lot. His thought process is that one man may be the father of one twin, while another is the father of the other twin. He claims he felt a stronger bond with the son than with her daughter. I'm talking to him, like, you know what I'm saying? He knows my face, he knows who I am. And Braley does too, to an extent, but it's just something about my son, man, when I see him, and it's like, he just, we connect. And you feel this because the twins are fraternal twins, right? So what we do- Okay, look, I understand his side, but if both of the children end up becoming his, it's gonna be conflicting since he spent so much more time with one kid than the other, and some of us know how freaking terrible favoritism can be and how it ruins relationships. And it can also take a long time to get over it, if at all. So his doubts might end up becoming something else, something worse, 
Time will tell. You don't want to get close to Braylee because you don't think she's yours and you're trying to form a relationship. How are you treating the children? I mean, I, like, you know what I'm saying? When I, I, I had flown to California, she had got me out there to go see the kids. And I mean, like I said, we had a good time. Okay, so they broke up and it was instigated by her. She claimed she was unhappy and depressed and she decided to change environment. She might have felt guilty too, but it was mainly because of him and his family, which is usually code word for having a side piece. I didn't get nothing one day and I just knew something was wrong. So I get to my house and there's nobody there. My kids are gone, she's gone, and the first thing in my mind, because my door's unlocked too. So I'm thinking somebody that came in my house, anybody could have did something. So she left with no word and when he called trying to reach her, she tried to guilt trip him for not signing the birth certificate when she was the one who left. Okay, whatever. She says at the time that she felt like she didn't have anything there in that city with him, and her only option was to leave. Sounds like a giant crock to me, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. After I delivered twins, that's where my headspace was. That's what I thought was the best option. You were so that's in survival mode. Thank you. Fight or flight, and I was done fighting with him. I want to understand from you, Miss Lucha, because this is the part I really don't get. What are your hopes? This results only for her to know the truth. She doesn't know what would happen next, and she doesn't know where they would go from there. But she's still sure he's the father of her kids. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Downs. You are not the father. Very sorry, Miss Looper. It's really unfortunate that none of those kids were his. He did want to be their father. Well, glad she does know who her children's father might be, but that's another issue if they don't want to take responsibility. Moving on to the next train wreck. A Georgia man met a woman at the club and had sexual relations with her. She's in court to prove that he's the father of her child because of course she is with Mr. Volmar, which resulted in him intentionally impregnating you. You say Mr. Volmar now refuses to take responsibility for his child, and you are here today to prove he is your baby's father. Is that the defendant calls her a manipulative liar in his testimony, saying she was sleeping with multiple men during the time of conception. But he takes it to a whole other route when he makes it all about him. So he's one of those. Desperate to be with you that she's decided to pin her child on you. Is that correct? Can't blame her. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Wood, how did you get involved with... I was going through some issues with my other kids. The plaintiff tells the story of how they met. She was having conflicts with her baby daddy, so she decided to give herself a good time by going to the club. What could possibly go wrong? And lo and behold, that's where they met. He approached her and the rest was history. I wind up leaving the club. He called me the following morning and asked me, can I come over to his house? I told him yes, but I had to wait. I had to make sure that, you know, my baby father was leaving out for work at following morning. So I headed to Mr. Vermore. Having someone you just met come over is pretty dangerous in a lot of different ways. I mean, it could be a serial killer or a robber or an arsonist. You just don't know. But the one thing I do know is that they probably had less than a 20 minute long conversation in a very loud club. But apparently that was enough for her to think it was a good idea to have him over. So we wind up having sex. The condom popped and I told him like, I'm a fast breeder. Like I have four other kids. So a fast he, breeder? Yes, I'm a fast Definitely breeder. Definitely a fast breeder. I'm well, mister, I would like to spend the rest of my life with you. Here, change plans when she told him she was pregnant. He claimed he has a previous girlfriend who was unable to get pregnant for five years. Can someone please tell this man that fertility's not a test tube? You don't believe you're the biological father or do you remember that night when the condom broke? I kind of remember the night that the condom broke. There's a couple of nights the condom broke and I just said, you know what? If I got it, I already got it. Who needs condoms anymore? Oh, wow, well, look at that. Talk about a real problem solver. If the condom keeps breaking, just get rid of it totally. Well, that's how babies are made, you idiot. And the dumbest part about this is that she allowed him despite her claims of having high fertility. It's like a match made in heaven or the bottom of the gene pool. Didn't work, I don't so know. So when you say you tried it before and it didn't work, what do you mean? I tried well. to get three different women pregnant. And when I stopped trying, she gets pregnant. I don't know, it don't add up to me. Okay, and so Ms. Wood, when you told him you were pregnant. Now, in my very humble opinion, based on doing a lot of these, I totally think this dude is intentionally denying paternity. 
I mean, he hasn't laid down any concrete doubts yet, except the fact that she's living with the father of her children. Well, technically, they've got a lot of sexual relations, and that counts for everything. Father, but I was not having sex with him within that month, I can see. So, when you found out you were pregnant, I automatically knew he was the father because I was not dealing with him. You lived with him. How can you not be dealing with him? He was driving his car. You wanted this baby, I think. Woohoo, the plot thickens. Because apparently, she told her baby daddy that he might be the father of the baby because she was living with him at the time, but deep inside, she knew it was the defendant's. That's the good life, Joyce. Like me. She that baby don't have exactly anything like for you. me but my toes. That baby look exactly she like him. His eyes, his nose, his she facial structure. Feet. That baby look just like him. You make Her. the same faces. I remember. That's you. Mr. Vomar, let's, let's... Okay, it just seems like he's purposely trying to deny it. Or at least he's purposely putting up a front. All the smugness that he's got going on isn't very confusing. I think he's in denial because he doesn't want to be hurt. Omar, another guy. No, we had sex. There was no sleeping. Oh. Sex. No sleeping. Let, let's just be respectful. I'm sorry. He just, he ruled. He ruined my relationship at the end of the no, day. No. They've got a lot of back and forth throughout the case, and Judge Lake just watched and observed. Me personally, I ate some popcorn. This dude makes cringe jokes and tries his best to be as unserious as possible, but if a child's involved now, he's got to buckle up, man up, and take this seriously. Look, I called him when I was in labor giving birth to my child. Eight he months. blocked me off of his phone. What you want me to do? I found out she was pregnant. Within two to three months, she was gone. And here he goes again. He keeps talking about lies that she's telling to steer him her way. But then he talks and he just sounds like the biggest clown the world has ever seen. And honestly, that says a lot because we've all seen some pretty big clowns here. I have low sperm count. So he's saying. So I know. I would have you 20 have kids angel. by now if that was not true. Okay, everybody's body is not the same. All right, I like to clone myself. So, Mr. Volmar, you say you have a... And when the professional comes around to explain to him that though he might have a low sperm count, it's still possible for him to father children, he makes some pretty lame jokes. If his sperm count is as high as his brain cell count, no wonder he's got doubts. Sperm have to swim to the egg in order to fertilize it. Can they swim? I can't swim. <laughs> Your sperm can certainly Mr. swim. Like, so is, you, no, you're becoming a clown, mm -hmm. and this is not a circus. Honestly. We're getting the information concerning you. It's a 50-50 chance that he might be the father. It's not that he doesn't want to be the father. He just doesn't see himself in the kid. It has been determined by this Mr. Volmar, you are the father. Thank you! Thank you! You're the father! Thank you! Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You are the father. That is your beautiful little girl. Oh, hey! Would you look at that? It's actually really nice that he's the father! Yeah, because, you know, it's totally gonna teach him how to be mature and, and raise a child the right way. Right? Anyway, on to the next case. A young New Mexico couple were friends with benefits, and now the man questions the paternity of their three-month-old child and claims she was involved with at least two other men. You don't say. Been into court to prove you did not father her three-month-old son, Christian. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Pope, you and your mother are insulted that Mr. Kennedy denies paternity and refuse to acknowledge your child. Okay, behind every paternity denial is doubt, and in this case, he claims she's trying to pin the child on him because her ex wasn't up to par. Ugh. All they were was friends with benefits, but even friends can make babies together. So wait a minute, why were you sleeping with him if he was a jerk? He came off as an all-American guy in the beginning. He was, we had a lot of things in common. We had the same birthday, the same football team. That's enough to sleep with somebody, Jerome. Birthday and a football team. He seems to have a thing for her ex. He always brings him to the topic and that's why she chose not to be around him anymore. Insecurities much? But anyway. That didn't stop either of them from having sexual relations with one another. Yes, sir. Because he accuses you of having feelings for your ex. That's not even remotely true. The reason why I my feelings had changed was because uh, she didn't have a GED. She didn't have uh, a future plan going for her at the time I was. At the time they were sleeping together, she didn't have a plan for her life, obviously. So he chose to pull back from the relationship, which was a smart idea. So he stopped returning her calls and started being a total jerk. And even when she found out she was pregnant, nothing changed. Around uh, May or 
June or July. At that point, she had said there were two other gentlemen involved and I had asked her, could it potentially be mine? And she said, no, you're in the clear. So at that point, oh, I completely- I never said he was in the clear. I completely- He always says that the dates don't connect. When he calculated the conception dates, they didn't match up to when they were together. And she also didn't call him till after the child was born. Ooh, saucy. She didn't tell you anything about the pregnancy, anything. You didn't hear from her until after the baby. Yes, I okay. had messaged him the night and you that I went into some like Let me read through these messages. I've been trying to get a hold of you. I wanted to call you. At this man is really indifferent towards her and it didn't make any sense. I haven't seen this level of neglect since my Tamagotchi in the 90s. Oh, surprise! They were having sexual relations with one another without protection. But hey, props to him. He didn't deny that fact, but he probably has doubts because there were other men involved in the paternity process. <coughs> Making babies. And then you reply, no. And then Ms. Pope says, okay, well, I'm not sure how to say this, so I'll just show you. Well, that's one heck of a way to make an introduction. A picture over Facebook. Well, technically, she was still angry with them for blowing her off several times, so she just thought it'd be a good reason not to tell him at all. Well, come on, there's absolutely no way that's not gonna backfire, am I right? Typically tell me I'm not the father and then months later try to get me to step up. I would have been there from the beginning if you would have told me 100%, this is my child. It's not a choice. Miss, Miss Pope, you do have to own- No, look at that, isn't that special? She keeps making demands that he needs to do, but she never follows up to do the necessary things on her part. And that's all he's trying to explain to her. I feel like you're missing is that you did admit that there were two other possibilities. Yeah, and what I he, admitted it. What he's saying is, is he took the approach, if you didn't reach out to him and you didn't include him, you must not have really thought he was the father. No, the defendant seems to be getting things twisted. She doesn't know what to prioritize, and in this case, it's like she's not prepared, so she's just saying any random thing that sounds plausible. You developing a love and a real admiration for him only to find out that he had been with another woman the whole time and that she was pregnant too? Yes, Your Honor. And that's what really hurt. Yes, Your Honor. And so now listen. No, you diddly. So she had feelings for him, but he treated her like an option. So what scared her is that he's going to treat her child like an option too and leave him. Well, guess what, buddy? That's not the plan and he's tried to make it clear to her. He only wants to be certain that the child is his before he starts forming a bond with the kid. Look, fair is fair. Nobody wants to form a bond with the kid that they have to break because the kid's not there. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Kennedy, you are the father. A Marietta, Georgia woman wants a DNA test after being confronted in a restaurant by a man who claims to be her father by raising his pant legs to reveal a tattoo of her name on his leg. He said he had kept this secret for 30 years because a good family raised her and he didn't want to interfere with that. Miss Andrews says she doubts Mr. Glenn is her father because he has not been in her life the entire year she's been living. She also said that she was raised by her biological father. I knew that he was the father of my youngest sister. Okay. Okay. Uh, supposedly we had different father um, and it was never a question never until and what was your relate your father the man you were told was your father what I, was that like I had a great relationship with my father although I did not live in the same household as he mm -hmm. he came around who just run into someone after all those years to just say that you're my father she said he had shown up at the restaurant at the time she was still grieving the loss of her father, who passed on the due date of her second child. She said he has brought more complications expressing he is her father while she's still grieving, and now she needs more answers. He said he and her mother grew up together and raised her together. He said they had started dating and he left for about eight months. When he came, Miss Andrews was born, but he was never aware of the pregnancy. He said he had asked her why, but she never gave him an answer. They told me this, and so I saw calculating and start thinking from the night that we went to club in 77 and went home with her. You know, I felt like that when she got pregnant. So you calculated up yeah, the time yeah, and you yeah, felt yeah, like yeah, that yeah, I, that's when you confronted possibility. her mother. She questioned why he had to wait for her father to pass before he showed up. He said she always had a feeling that he was part of her, but she disagreed, saying she never had such feeling. 
She said her father signed her birth certificate and took responsibility from day one, and that's all that matters to her. He said he wasn't there because the father that raised her already thought he was the father. Situation. The only reason why I went on and proceeded to see whether or not he was my father, because when I was on a plane one time, it was a guy uh, who claims that he was a psychic. Beside me, he gave me a description of my father, and he said, your father is dark complex. I'm thinking this guy's delusional on this because I know the description of my father. She said she also had a cousin out of nowhere in the family that waited till about six months after her father passed to tell her he was not her father. She said it had all been crazy and wanted answers when she met Mr. Glenn in the restaurant. She said he had put her in depression when he approached her. She added that it seemed like a cowardly move to her. She says she doesn't think he has an ulterior motive because of the tattoo he has. She also said she wasn't trying to bash him. She just wants to know why he waited that long. I used to think about it every day, all the time. What did you say to yourself when you thought about it? I was, I was like, you know, wanna, I want to reach out to her, but you know, I didn't know, I didn't know really how to come at her like that. Well, you know, what, okay. She said she had an argument with the man she called her father one day, and out of the blue, she said he wasn't her father anyways. She said she had said that as a trigger to get him to tell her something, but he never believed it nor did he have any doubts of her being his daughter. She said she was so adamant that she was his daughter that she was in his will, and he left her as his beneficiary. Okay, do you believe Mr. Glenn is Ms. Andrews' father? No, I do not. No, I Why? do not. Keep in mind that Donna and Yolanda are 11 months apart. If he was, if he had thought that he was her father, okay, keep in mind my mother had to get pregnant again to have my baby sister. And so if he's her, he had opportunity to be a father. He said he didn't know at the time that she was his daughter because her mother never told him she was pregnant. Miss Gates said she never heard anything that suggested he was Miss Andrew's father. She said her mother's side of the family never even mentioned it. She said she had just recently accepted that he was her younger sister's father, as she had always thought Mr. Roger was their father. She said she was just as shocked as Miss Andrews when the tattoo day came up. Have a family that he couldn't provide for. And that's I what understand he said. that part, but why not some kind of notion or before she got, who does that? Who lets a person grow up and get grown? And it's like an insult, a slap in the face to my stepfather who's passed on. To say that after he's died, why didn't he mention it when he was alive so we could get to the bottom? Now everybody's right. passed away. Who can we ask? Right. It's all hearsay. Right. Mr. Glenn is quite confident he is her father. Miss Andrews said she wouldn't call him dad. She added that if he turned out to be her father, he shouldn't expect her to call him dad nor should he expect her to get emotionally wrapped up into him, as it would be something that's just on paper. According to her, she's too old to start coming up with those feelings, and she believes he would not only affect her, but her children also. Let's check out the results. Paternity of Ms. Donna Andrews. Mr. Glenn, you are her father. Oh my God. A nine-year-old relationship is on the line due to a man's suspicions that his girlfriend faked an at-home DNA test for their four-year-old son. He said she was sleeping with two different men while he was away, and either of them could be the father. Miss Mahoney denied his accusations of infidelity and said she is very sure that he is the child's father. He said they've known each other since they were kids, and he needs clarity as they are engaged and he would like to marry her, and also hopes the child is his. He takes it hard. He looks up to him a lot. Sometimes he gets real short-tempered with him and just like kind of, he'll sit by him and move away and it's hard as a mother to see that. And Kevin's four, so he understands this rejection. Yeah, it, it takes him really hard. Um, he kind of... Mr. Watson says she was cheating on him when he came back. He also said that she had a bad reputation of being promiscuous. He said she had two men staying with her who were showering her with gifts and taking care of her. She confirmed that she had two men staying with her. She said she had no job and she had nothing to fend for herself. She also added that they were very close family friends and they just wanted to help her. She said she wasn't providing them with anything but a bedroom. So he said he was having sex with Miss Mahoney? Yes. You confronted her about that? Yes. And when I say? asked him, I told him we can go together in front of this person and ask them and he doesn't want to But when I do say let's go in front of him, she never does. He doesn't want to do that. Mr. Watson said the other guy called the child his son, but Miss Mahoney countered him, saying that was because he provided for him while he was away. He also added that the other guy always said he was in love with her, and he calls her his girl to this day. She admitted that the guy had said he was in love with her, but according to her, she cannot control somebody else's feelings. 
She said she doesn't love him and all she needed was help. And in return, she gave him a room. You no, know, her and her friend fell out, you know, and the friend called me one day and was like, I wanna I wanna tell you everything. And she basically told me everything how she was. What she did with... was lie to you because you and her had sexual intercourse. No. Did you not? No, we did not. She no, that did not happen. No. He said her friend had told him she was sleeping with multiple men, including the one staying with her. He said she also told him about the men crawling through the window late at night to see her. Miss Mahoney said she found out that her friend and Mr. Watson had slept with each other under a bridge, hence why she told him all that. A bridge? What happened to beds? He denied having any form of sexual relations with her friend, but he also said there was a sexual contact. He said he believed her because that was her best friend. <laughs> hey, we got TNA. <laughs> You took a DNA test? Yes, ma'am. What happened? I went and was on government assistance and child support. They, uh, we have to comply with them. And they asked me who the father was. I told him who he was. He said forging papers was what her friend did. And when he saw the papers, he didn't see any government stamp on them. He also said it took about seven to eight months for them to get the results. In her defense, they couldn't find him to get his DNA. Judge Lauren Lake said the court had made inquiries about how long it should take to get results. She said they were told it takes two to one month. She said she didn't take a sealed envelope to him because she never thought he would question paternity. Well, I heard the rumors when they were when it first came about. I, I'm confused also with, with what all has been said and what's all going on. But did you ever hear this information about papers being forged, yeah. DNA papers? You yes. heard that? Yes, she knew her too. Yes, ma'am. And I did not care for her. Do you Mr. Watson's mother says she didn't have any doubts before, but now she's also questioning paternity and it's bothering her. Miss Mahoney said her relationship is on the line and everything now depends on the result. She said she wants to marry him and have a future, and she also wants her son to be happy. She also said they've done a lot of things that they're not proud of, and she just wants it to be over now. She said she had other relationships, but not around the time she was pregnant, and the child was already about two years at the time. Let's check out the results. Of Watson versus Mahoney, when it comes to four-year-old Kevin. Watson. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Watson, you are the father. See? I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> Um. An Illinois woman lost her son and daughter on the same day, and she is desperate to find out if her son fathered a child prior to his death. Miss Kyles said the defendant's deceased son is the father of her 14-month-old daughter. She stated that she knows the defendant is in pain due to the loss of her son, but so is she, and she wants nothing more than to give her closure. Miss Light says Miss Kyles is a pathological liar, but as much as she wants a piece of her son to be here, she doesn't believe the child is his. She wasn't. A mistake. We planned her and me and him was together. That was my boyfriend. I loved him. He loved me and he loved his daughter. We were his family. So I understand she's hurting. That's her son. But Miss Light said she had formed a bond with the child. She said her son had come to her many times hurt. She said another man had answered the phone trying to claim the child was his. She said the baby hadn't even been born at the time. Miss Kyle said that she and James, the deceased, never had arguments about any females or males. She said he probably made that up because she wasn't letting him around her when she was pregnant. She said he had moved and tried to reach out to her, but she ignored him because she didn't want to deal with him. And from my understanding, he didn't move back to Chicago. He was kicked off. From my understanding, he came to go to a court date that he had in Chicago and that's when he found out he no longer had a home in Oklahoma. His stuff had been supposedly thrown out and what? Miss Kyle said he got mad because she didn't like anybody in her house. She said he had brought some other guy to her house and she told him she didn't want anybody in her house as he was irritated and her two-year-old was in the house. She said nobody was at the hospital with her when the child was born. She also said she never called to tell him the baby was being born. She said she had decided to give the child away to a family member, but after a week of giving the child out, she wanted her back, but the family member refused, so she had to call her mother to help get her back, and she did. She dropped her at Miss Light's house where James was staying. Oh, you were planning after, to give no. the baby up for adoption? He knew afterwards when I got her back. After that week, I called him on the phone and said, I'm sorry I did this. Me and him had to talk about it. Me and him both were crying on the phone. He said, I still love you. We're going to get through this. Honestly, we, I think we, my we need son to get her died back. not knowing his baby's biological name because my son had tatted on his face Ava Jache. My son would have told me. Ms. Kyle said they couldn't change her name because they were told that they had to wait until she turned one to get her name changed. Ms. Light said he was raising her before he died. She also said the baby was in the car when he passed away. According to her and what she understood, 
girls were arguing and another guy came and shot him. She said the girl had told her that all she could do was try to pull him into the car and drive off. She said there was a bullet hole and either the door or a car seat stopped it from hitting the baby. She said she had found this out through the news. Kept asking about doctor's appointments because I feel like she need her shots and things like that. And that was the last thing me and my son talked about when he came and got her that day too. Also, besides her birthday that was coming up, she wanted to talk to me in person, I do believe, to t let me know. Letting me know that she didn't have to tell me this, but my grandbaby name is not Ava. And that's how I found out a couple of weeks ago. The child apparently did not have his last name. Miss Light said he was a good father and he did everything for the child. She said her son never said anything about him and Miss Kyle's giving the child a particular name when her name was actually something else. She believed her son died not knowing her name was Ava Jashia Miller. She also said she believes the child has a different name because another man is her biological father. When I had to go find my grandbaby one day and the guy that asked at the door to me, he Try to favor my son. He even got the tat some tatted over his eyes. Him and him and James met before they met. And so you felt like the guy looked similar to your son. Somewhat. She said all she was thinking about when she took the child was whether or not the child was her son's because the child had also looked like the guy she had seen. He said her son had called her to call Miss Kyle and get close to her. She never responded to her text messages, nor did she respond to her efforts. She believes Miss Kyle would have had somebody if she had responded and gotten to know her. She added that she wanted the child to be her grandbaby so they could do the right thing and give her the right name. Never, James never ever once denied Ava, never once denied Ava to me, never once said that to me at all. James would ever allow a Ava to have a different name, to be named Skylar and this yep. entire- I told him, I said, don't tell your mom. I don't know how she would react. The child apparently doesn't even know her name is Skylar as everybody calls her Ava. She said she can't afford to lose anybody else in her life and she had already lost a son and a daughter. Miss Kyle said she had no other testimonies to share as she had already told the truth. Let's check out the results. Case of Kyle's versus Light. When it comes to 14 month old Skylar Ava, it has been determined by this court. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Light and Skylar Ava is 99%. <laughs> you are related. A woman brought her ex-boyfriend to court to prove her 18-year-old daughter was fathered by a different man. Ms. Taylor said he is accusing her of disappearing and hiding her daughter for 14 years. She said she had kept her away because she was certain he is not the father to her child. He said he had always known that Ms. Turner was his daughter, and he has searched for her for 14 years. She also said she didn't want the lifestyle Mr. Thompson was leaving for her daughter. Mr. Thompson, did you know Ms. Taylor was pregnant? Yes. Were you involved in the pregnancy? Yes. You were? In what way? She was pregnant three months. We were still together. And then that's when, you know, she went her way and I went mine, but she just up and disappeared. So I moved. Another state before or after you had the baby? After. I don't so, know. So, Mr. Thompson, you were away when she had the baby. You weren't around, but did you know she had the baby? Were you informed? No. No, I wasn't. Informed. She said she had sent him pictures of the child when the child was a baby. He said he had found some baby pictures in her belongings, and he told himself the child might be his. He said he didn't have any information about the child. He added that he didn't even know that the child was a boy or a girl. He said she had only one best friend who he asked, but he said he had told her to tell him nothing. Miss Taylor said she never told her friend such. She said her friend told her that the last time she had heard from him, he was doing good and he was married. She didn't ask any further questions than that. Before I met Mr. Thompson, I was having an affair with a married man. And being that I was having an affair with a married man, honestly, I didn't know if it was a married man's child or Mr. Thompson's child. This other man, the man you were dating, you're saying that child was by him? I have strong feelings that the married man is my daughter. She said her daughter believed Mr. Thompson was her father because that was what she told her. Mr. Thompson questioned why she never informed him. She said she got in contact with him, which was on Facebook. That was when he found out where they were. She said she also told the married man that he could potentially be the father. And she said he told her he didn't want anything to do with it, which is why she just told her daughter that Mr. Thompson was her biological father. She contacted me. I'm happy. All I want to do is talk to my daughter. And I didn't know my baby. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know how to look for my baby. So have you ever met or seen I your daughter? I never have saw a hair on her head. 
On that, she sent me pictures. 18 years. 18. Miss Turner said her mother had informed her that Mr. Thompson was her father, so she kind of formed a relationship with him. She said she didn't have a father before her mother told her this. She said she never asked about her dad because she felt it was going to be an argument and she and her mother would fight about it and she would never get an answer. She said she had found out a week ago that there was a possibility that Mr. Thompson was not her biological father. Being with my sister and she had brought it up in a conversation on the phone. I mean, you waited until 2012 to just get one name. Yeah. <laughs> and then two weeks ago, or a week ago, they tell you that may not be, that it's almost like getting ripped. She said she was very hurt as she had formed a relationship with Mr. Thompson and then having to hear he was not her father and there could be another guy is heartbreaking. Miss Taylor said she didn't tell her there was two possibilities because she was trying to protect her. But it all turned out she was just hurting her. She also said she wanted her daughter to find whatever peace she's trying to find. Miss Turner said it was terrible growing up without a father because she had to go to prom and she ran track and not having both her parents there was hurtful. In the audience that like everybody has their brothers and their sisters and their moms and dads all cheering for them. And I didn't have that. I didn't have it. And it's really hard because I always wanted that. Miss Turner questioned her mother, asking why she should have to ask who her father was before she decided to tell her because her mother should have told her right away. Her mother insisted that she was trying to protect her, but she replied saying the way she was being protected was not the right way. She said the only thing her mother had told her about the other man was that she was sleeping with him and he was married. Mr. Thompson said the situation doesn't only affect her because she has two sisters and two brothers, whom he had told and they believe she is their sister knew where you was at. I never knew your name, never knew what you even looked at like, but I never stopped thinking that you was my daughter. Miss Turner made a memory book for Mr. Thompson, which she brought to court to containing pictures of her growing up, as she wanted him to see the moments that he had missed. Miss Taylor apologized to both of them for putting them through all of this, and also said she should have done better. Let's check out the results. Of Taylor versus Thompson. When it comes to 18-year-old Mylinda Turner. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Thompson, you are not her father. <laughs> A woman fears her teen daughter's promiscuity was caused by her low self-esteem and now she's left with the paternity mystery. She blames her mother for most of her problems. That's a pretty strong accusation. Let's jump right in. 13 years old. He created an anger problem toward me, uh, misbehaving in school. Uh, she had low self-esteem. She said because her weight problem. I say she looked beautiful to me, and but she uh, questionable about you know her weight. You know it's not what she, where she wants to be, but she can do something about that. You know she can go to the Y. She felt everywhere she went, she had to be a certain size. She also couldn't wear all the designer clothes she had wanted to wear because she couldn't fit in. Her mother made an effort taking her to the gym, but that didn't do any better. She got water poured on her and candies thrown at her when she went there to exercise. I wanted someone to, you know, Valentine's Day, I wanted give. I wanted to be, you know, walk in parks. I wanted all that and I never got it. So you were dating and sleeping with more than one guy. Yes, Sean, I At the same time. Yes. As a mother should, Miss White was concerned about her daughter because she believed she was finding love in all the wrong places. She understands that she wants to feel loved and have a boyfriend, but places like Craigslist and Moco Space, or even getting into strange cars at nighttime, are definitely not the ways to get one. House. Um, you know, I felt as though she was my real friend. She had my best interest in mind. One guy, and you know, if she didn't feel like he was good enough, she would introduce me to another guy. And you know, if he wasn't good enough, it was another guy. So, you know, I always did it to please her. You know, I didn't want to lose her as a friend because I don't make many friends. Were you sleeping with these guys? She was introducing me. Not being able to make friends can be heart-wrenching, but having to get validation from people just to feel accepted is also not the best possible option. She was dating Mr. Langford at the time, but he wasn't the guy she was looking for. Mr. Clopton was a one-night stand, but she had slept with both men at the same period of conception. The other guy that I had met at her house also. Did you sleep with him as well? Yes, sure. Okay. Now, before anybody comes in here and tells me anything, I want you to know, number one, you're beautiful. You're a beautiful young woman. 
Although there aren't many people who would say it, but she's truly a beautiful woman. You have to believe it yourself and own it. Judge Lauren Lake invited the men into the court. Starting with Mr. Lankford, he explained that they were dating for a month, but she had trust issues with him after he and his friends had a threesome with her. You don't say. Well, honestly, I didn't see that one coming. Did you? The time of conception. Yes, ma'am. I was. And so you are one of the possible five. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Clopton told the court that they had met at a party and she came up to him asking him to sleep with her. But apparently there was actually another guy waiting to take his turn. This is getting really complicated really fast. The other guy? Yes, ma'am. What other guy? The other guy she used to date. So she asked you to come in the room after you were intimate with Ms. White and you left out. This other gentleman came in the room. Ms. White, they're both claiming that they had sex with you on nights when other guys also had sex with you. That's not true. That's not true. She admitted to having slept with both men during the time of conception. Her mother explained that she had met Mr. Langford a year before, and according to her, he's so sure he's the baby's daddy, he even went as far as putting a picture of him alongside the baby on Facebook. It's my first time young ever singing him. Mr. Cloppin. Yes, yes, Your Honor. But going down there to Miss Miller House, multiple partners, I've heard that she've had sex with down there. That a room, and maybe a room, I don't know. But I'm here for Christina and for my daughter. Christina did not choose her family. None of us chose who our family would be. And if either one of these your man father i want you to stand up help me because i've been there have either she told the court mr langford had tried to come to the hospital during the birth but she never saw mr corey he explained that he wasn't even aware she was pregnant but she countered him immediately saying he was lying because he had met miss christie at the train station asking her why she was trying to pin the baby on him is there something we don't know why is miss white doing most of the talking why does she know so much? After I came from the um, after I came from the doctor, I posted on Facebook and said like I'm, I've just found out I'm pregnant. And he commented on it, and he was like, "Who do you think the father?" You posting it because you didn't know who the father was, and you just wanted to let it. No, I wanted to let my friends know because I told everybody that I was going to the doctor that day. Did you know who the father was when you posted it? No. Oh. There's some information that shouldn't even see the light of social media, but it would take a lot of explaining that to teenagers these days. Miss Miller, her friend in question, is in court, and Miss White believes everything that happened was because of her because it all happened in her house. Yeah, you're no friend of Christie's, and I want you to know that. I always respect you for you to allow this to happen at your house. Hold on. You put her life in danger. It's the Jesus out there, it's AIDS out there. You knew that was going on. We can't consider her a good friend, now can we? Despite the fact that it's clear that she didn't do anything positive for Miss Christie, it's important we hear her side of the story. She denied the accusation of setting her up with guys. She told the court that Miss Christie was always talking to her other friend. She was talking to this friend before she met Mr. Langford, and she had asked him to sleep with her before she even knew it. I had a threesome at my house. Yes, ma'am, it happened at my house. I was there in the room. You're supposed to be her friend. Now. In the room? You let that yes. And I can't control, I can't control that because she, she's a grown woman. If that's your friend, you could have called you, me. That's a grown you know woman. me. I can't tell nobody what not to do and what to do. We not church. I can't tell you what house. to do. My mama will tell Chris all the time, and Chris will know my mama. Mama, Chris, you ain't got to sleep with these guys. You feel me? My mama said, I don't feel like that. I don't feel like that. She Hold said, on. I don't feel like you sleep with these guys isn't going to solve this at all but an 18 year old sleeping with men like it's some kind of spectator sport is just wrong although we have to put in mind that miss christie has admitted to sleeping with men for the wrong reasons and at the end it's her choice and her responsibility you know what you do we all as miss white said we don't choose our family we can't choose where we come from but the moment you make the choice to engage in activity that can produce a human being that it's time for you to grow up because now you gotta raise somebody yeah that's the honest truth. They all have a lot of growing up to do, and it's just unbelievable seeing young people at their age becoming parents. Judge Lauren Lake was quite pissed that the child wasn't even put into consideration while all whatever was going on was happening. She wouldn't want to see her daughter follow through her footsteps. I mean, just the thought of it is disturbing. And I want to do better for her. Okay. 
Miss White, are you okay? I just want to know who the daddy is of my grandbaby. It's about her. I said, no, nothing about love. I love that baby. I love her so much. She need her daddy in her life. I'm hoping. She hopes Mr. Lankford is the father, so she knows he's there, and if he turns out not to be the father, she stated that the child would still have a father. She stated she has her and her grandfather, and that's all she needs. It's nice knowing she has people around her. Nevertheless, there's really nothing that beats growing up with your biological father. Starting with Mr. Clopton, it's time for the results. Mr. Clopton, you are not the father. Do it. Do it. Do it. Well, he didn't look okay, but Miss White was definitely relieved. Let's move on to the next results. Mr. Langford, you are her father. <laughs> I thought she'd at least be happy she now knows who the father of her child is. I guess I was wrong. And it's on to the next case. More than three years after her daughter was born, a woman stuns a former high school jock with claims that he's the father. So you got a text. This is the text. Miss Smith says, you know I had your baby. And you write back, when was this? <laughs> and then Miss Smith says, 2015. And Mr. Womack says, and why you think it's mine and just now saying so? He told the court he was upset by the news because he felt like a bad person as it looked like he didn't want to be in her life. She explained that the child always wants to be with her daddy when she sees him. Did I miss something? How does she see him? To think she meant seeing him on Facebook. My oh my, the innocent child has a Facebook father. Unbelievable. That is just sad. Something happened a long time ago, and I didn't have, you know, the courage to tell Mr. Woman. I just showed her. They met in high school. He was an all-star basketball player, and she was a regular freshman, and according to her, they started sleeping together. Just like that? Well, I'm not surprised. It really just takes a DM nowadays. They never had a relationship. They were just sleeping with each other. How many times did you have sex? Uh, a lot. It was uh, three, Your Honor. No, three times? Three times. No, it wasn't, Your Honor. I can count okay. on one hand three times, Your Honor. Well, it only takes one hand to count to three. Conforming to what he said, the first time was at a party. The next was in his room at his mom's house when she was away. And the third time was on the back porch. It would take some miracles not to get pregnant with that one. I'd be surprised if he turns out not to be the father. My mother felt that I wasn't, you know, feeling well. I was supposed to go to church that Sunday. We didn't go to church. I thought I was pregnant November 23rd. Um, I didn't, you know, tell Mr. Womack at the time because I told my ex. You're probably wondering why she told her and not Mr. Womack, aren't you? Well, you're not alone. I'm curious to know too. She explained that she didn't point fingers at him because every time they had a sexual encounter, he always said he pulled out. It was at this point she decided to pin it on her ex. I'd never understand why people think it's okay to do things like this. Here, one more story about somebody not finished in the act. I can't believe that we are still in this place where we don't know. Child support had done a DNA test and the test had stated that her ex was not the father, so she went running back to Mr. Womack. This is why you shouldn't be making paternity decisions off your head. Mr. Womack explained that he had claimed the baby when she sent him that text because he didn't want the child to not have a father if there was a possibility she was his. I heard to my family, you know, after three years, and you just now telling me, you know, I can't, I, I just, I can't. Because when you think it can't get any worse, he revealed that she had also slept with other family members. Do the what now? I am as shocked as you are. I was hoping she'd say he was lying, but unfortunately, he wasn't. She admitted to sleeping with his family member, but she didn't forget to leave out the fact that it wasn't during the time of conception. Like, that makes it any better. When I was messing with her, she was, she, it wasn't just me and her. It was, she, she was messing around. She, it, it was, it was like it was a sport for her. Do people even think about the consequences of what they do before they actually dive into it? These things can be avoided. It just takes a sprinkle of being responsible. Just a woman had told me, um, he said, you could have slept with one of my cousins, and that's why my, the baby looked like him. I said, I, well, how does that happen? Oh, don't worry about that. I said, well, which cousin do you think my daughter looked like? Well, there's only one person that can answer that question, and we all know who. Mr. Womack came to court with a cousin of his that also knows about her. According to Mr. Sherman, she was the go-to girl. That's some way to describe her. 
That's definitely not a good label. If you didn't know what a go-to girl was, let's gather up here and find out. Uh, when one guy done messing with her, the next guy, you know, try to slide in or something. Oh, so one person would have sex with her, and then if one of the friends say, I want to have sex, you all would say, well, you know you could call the go-to girl. Yes, ma'am. And how would you have her okay. number? You share it? Uh, their DM. She didn't deny this accusation either. It just keeps piling up. In her defense, she was just trying to fit in because she was bullied, but she was quite unaware she was doing it the wrong way. I agree with her on that one. That's definitely not a way to fit in. Regardless of all of the inappropriate things she's done, we do need to commend the fact that she finally testified to something that made sense. Hard as it was for me to fathom a young girl like you just giving your body away and laying down with anybody, any little young boy that wanted to do it to try to feel important or special or feel included, that's hard for me to accept because I don't want that for any young woman. But at the same time, do I know that that's a reality for many? It's called peer pressure for a reason. Her daughter is four years old and she's been asking for her dad. She was so excited coming to court knowing fully well, but at the end of the day, she was going to get to see her dad in real life. That is just heartbreaking. What are you thinking, Steph? I just wish I could have been there if she's mine, you know? But this is what it takes, you guys. It takes being honest. And the only way forward is to get the results, so let's check out those results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Womack, you are the father. <gasps> And listen, you don't always have to fit in. Embrace your true self and stand out. There is nothing wrong with you. On to the next case. Watch as these teen parents face the consequences of their mistakes. How bad can it be? Well, let's dive in and find out. Hi, Galloway. Mr. Harris, you state that you're a family man who first became a father at the age of 12, going on 13. Although that child was yours, you're certain that Miss Galloway's twins are not. Yes, Your Honor. You all got started having- Whoa, 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 hold up. 12 years old? That child should be doing assignments, not making babies. Where are the Hecker's parents? That's just way too young. He explained that they didn't have a relationship but a one night stand and some here and there pleasurable moments. Man, all I wanted at 12 were some candies and some video games. They had also met in church. Whoa, good lord. First off, I was I was dating someone that he knew. A musician. Yeah, a musician that he we knew. We ended up needing a ride home on a particular day, and the guy that I was dating called him up. And so uh, he came and gave us a ride to my apartment complex. The guy that I knew, you walked down the street to, you know, drop his kids off, and Mr. Harris here helped me to the door with my groceries. And he said, um, so when you gonna let me in the house? I said, what you oh, talking about? He said, when you gonna I, let me come I, over? I said, a... um, the only time you're gonna come over is if we're having a box. Well, they obviously did a lot more than Bible study. She occasionally saw him in church, so they started conversating. He once was walking from a children's hospital not knowing where he was going, so she offered to be with him as she wasn't going to have her kids that evening. We walked to a, a van where he knew the, that the doors were going to be unlocked. So we Your go in the van, van. we go into the van, Your and friend we van. sleep in the van that night. We didn't sleep in the van. And it's when, you know, I'm waking up, I'm feeling him, you know. I'm the, uh. I'm, Okay, I'm gonna go, true. go past that part. Okay, so you know, <laughs> we, um, like we end up getting involved. We did get involved in that van the next morning because you know that night, you know, I felt comfortable. With These are children that were supposed to be in church worshiping. They argued about how long they had slept together in the van, but it didn't really matter. All that mattered was that it was long enough to potentially produce two beautiful babies. She stated that he was the only one she was talking to at the time. Well, just talking was what they were supposed to be doing. Eat with Mr. Samuels, too? No. That's a lie. That, no, that is not a lie. You that and, is not a lie. You and Mr. Samuels slept together. Me, you, you, told me out this, you told me out your own mouth. Just like the he boyfriend right. you had before you met me and had sex with me, you were you talking. You are trying to throw up everything that you can. Somebody needs to take that smirk off of his face. Mr. Samuel is in court, and he doesn't believe he's the father of the twins. He revealed that Mr. Harris was known to be promiscuous. They went on arguing about the number of women they had both chased. 
At this point, we know we have two childish and immature men in court today. When she had the twins, like, I got remarried. So me and my wife went over there to the house. And, you know, we seen the babies. And the thing about when I, when I picked them up, I said, oh, yeah. I knew who the father is, these twins. They, they, basically, oh, like, is, oh, he, they, they look just like him. You, you, he can't deny you, especially a little girl. You cannot deny that child, y'all. When the kids got sick, she told him and he asked her where Mr. Harris was. She told him he was doing nothing and wasn't even trying to do anything for the kids. Based on this, he went to get medication for the kids because they had a fever. He pretty much stepped up like a father would. Well, let's find out which of the men is the father. Let's check out the results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Samuel, you are not the father. Mr. Harris, you are the twins' father. How the heck does he even have nine children? That's a baby-making factory. And there's that smile again. I doubt he knows that's not how life is supposed to be lived. He wouldn't be smiling if he did. They both need to stop having kids. Onward to the next case. A woman brought her first love and the person she lost her virginity to to prove he's the father of her 15-month-old son. <laughs> After middle school, like, after when we hit high school, everything was going straight, like, her freshman year. But after that, like, when we had gotten into that one argument, we broke up, and then that was that. And she started messing with my homeboy, and she started messing with multiple people. And it's just another case of babies having babies. I'm really curious to know where their parents are when they're out making babies instead of reading books. She explained that she and his friend were once close friends, and he used to come back to tell her that Mr. Hollis was messing with one of her friends. I thought it was cool to go mess with one of his friends because he has slept with one of mine. We both had made a mistake. No, no. We both made no, a mistake. That's not how it is. No, that's that's not how well, there's one parent in court. She better shed some light into this darkness. She explained that his friends and the other guys she had messed with were all at her house one weekend she was off. Miss Galloway was going to the store and she called out to his best friend as her best friend. Miss Shan stated that she was shocked as that was supposed to be his best friend, too. That whole best friend thing, but, like, now that they just slept around on me, like, I don't know, like, they probably were doing it then. They were. Like, back when they, they were, were best friends. I believe they no, were. No, I believe they were. No. Oh, I no. told them they were. All right. No. <laughs> this is exactly you. why you all need to be just out playing a sport, learning a craft. Miss Shan isn't any different from the kids, is she? How are you even allowing children at that age to sleep together? When she found out she was pregnant, she told his friend who she had cheated on him with as he was the one she was going out with at the time. He was happy about it. Mr. Hollis ended up finding out on the street and he told his mom as well. She was going with my friend. She was still sneaking around with me anyway because he, I felt like he did it to me. So y'all together, I'm finna go and do, do what I gotta do. Yeah, okay, yeah, that did happen as well. It just keeps getting worse. She revealed that she had told them there was a possibility that he or his friend could be the father. She also mentioned that she never told the other guy there was a possibility someone else could be the father. Hell, more futures did him than the other guy. Yeah, he did. Or he looked, he he did. Did. He looked nothing like the other guy son. at all. I, um, I, I um, FaceTimed her and told her that it looked like my, I said, um, Aiden looked like a mirror. And what did she say, Mom? Um, it's, it's a possibility. So you admitted that it was a possibility. Really? The other guy didn't sign the birth certificate because he didn't have his ID at the time. Well, they shouldn't be making babies in the first place. She stated that she never talked to the other guy about Mr. Hollis being a possible father, but she believes he had heard it on the streets because everybody was saying the child looked like Mr. Hollis. Regardless of what he was hearing, he still believed the child was his. That him and my son is, is beefing over it. Beefing over it? Yeah. They got into it. We got into it a few times, to my son. Like, it's not no beef. On. He ain't no beef with me no more. Like, I, I, I let the whole thing go. Like, the whole thing. But it was the no, ultimate. I can't tell you write songs about it. What you mean? He made a song, Your Honor, and it specifically says, about a year ago, I fell in love with a thigh. That's what it says. To say the least, I'm disappointed in Miss Shands. She could have done better. I think we've had enough of these charades. It's time for the results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Holland, you are not the father. I see tears in your eyes, Ms. Shands, because I know how desperately you wanted Mr. Hollis to be Aiden's biological father.